Hello. Um, I wanted to, to show you how to do some of these learning tutorials in Tinkercad. Some of my students were having a little trouble. So once you're logged in, and if you don't know how to log in, um, watch my other video. But you're basically just signing in with Google. As long as you have a Google account, you click Learn once you're logged in. Um, when you get when you get to the the dashboard, yours won't exist here because I've already created a bunch of different uh, different 3D objects. Y you won't have these, so you'll just click Learn, and the place to start is always Starters. Now, this is going to be easiest if you have a mouse. Okay, having that center click button a lot easier. Um, I'll try to put a link if I can find it to how to center click with the mouse pad on a Chromebook, but I can't guarantee it. So center click is nice. Having the wheel is really nice as well. So we go to learn and then starters. Now I want to make sure that you're on 3D. There's some other really cool things, um, but stay on 3D for right now and click place it. Now that's going to open up. All right, you will see. And actually, mine is already done. Yours is going to look like this. I'll reset it. All right. It says, see the orange shape on the work plane. So it has the directions over here. Here's the orange shape. It says, that is a hint. Hints help guide you as you get started. Find the box shape in the shapes panel on the right side of the screen. So here's our shapes panel. And they're saying find the box shape. We don't want this one. This is actually a hole. And we'll get to that in a minute, in a few minutes. This is the box we want to choose. Okay. So I'm going to start just so you see, but you don't have to start. Left click and drag the box shape to the hint on the work plane. Continue to the next step. So I'm going to click it. I'm going to drag it. And I'm going to overlap it right here. I don't think it has to be perfect, but try. And then I can scroll down and I'll see all it says is continue to the next step. So I click next. Now, if this next isn't showing up, you need to go up to your settings in Google Chrome or Firefox or Edge and zoom out. Okay, your screen might not be big enough to show it, but then you're just going to click next. And then look at the stars. I did a great job. It says, congratulations, you have successfully started your journey to becoming a designer. Let's keep going. So hopefully you've done that. If you haven't, go back through what I just said, and hopefully you can do it. Then we click Done, and it's going to move us on to the next one. So then we say Continue. I think this is the one where a mouse would be really nice to have. If you don't, hopefully I'll be able to post some stuff. So I had already finished it, but I'm going to hit Reset. All right. <clears throat> now it says just left click and drag anywhere on the view cube. So I'm not going to click. No, actually, I probably, no, yeah, I don't want to click there, okay? It says just click, left click and drag anywhere on the view cube and see how it changes the point of view. Now, I'm guessing they're talking about this. If I left click, there we go. So that's really nice. I can also, oh, actually, that, that fixes the center mouse button. If I use the center mouse button, or actually the right click, it does the same thing out here. But you can click here with the left click and move around. And it so, says, uh, try clicking different areas in the view cube to rotate the design to match. So in, for this instance, we're looking at the front. And now I want to look at the right side. I want to look at the top. And I can make it line up so I can read it correctly. I want to look at the left side. See, if this was like, you know, aligned incorrectly, you'd want to figure out how to just drag it around. back. And then right here, like bottom is upside down, so I can fix that by rotating. And now bottom is viewable. Then it says click to the next step. So I click next. If you have a mouse with a scroll wheel, use it for zooming in and out. So if I just use my scroll wheel, zoom out, zoom in. I'm going to change my view again. All right, zoom out, zoom in. If you have a touchpad, you will zoom using the gesture that you normally use in other apps when wanting to zoom. So if you're on a Chromebook and most laptops, you're going to be you're going to be pinching. Okay, you put two fingers on there, slide them out or slide them in, and that should zoom you in and out. If not, you might have to look up your specific computer 
um, touchpad and see exactly how that works. You might be able to get into settings, but if you're on a Chromebook, it's probably just pinching, just like on a cell phone if you were going to zoom in. Now I'll click Next. All right. So now it says press and hold the right mouse button while moving your mouse to practice rotating your view of the design. So instead of clicking here, I'm going to click out anywhere out here, even on top of it. It doesn't really matter. And then I just move my mouse around. If you want to use your touchpad, this is important. You can either press Control and left click. So Control is on your keyboard. It's C-T-R-L. It's probably the bottom left key. Um, or simply right click and drag if you have your touchpad set up for accepting right clicks. So on a Chromebook, right click is actually pressing with two fingers at the same time on most Chromebooks. So that might work for you. I'm, I don't have a Chromebook in front of me right now. So I would say control and left click is one of the best ways to do it. Learning those shortcuts will really, really help you as you move forward with your skills and computers. Then we click next. I apologize if you hear my son crying. We're all home, all in this together. Wash your hands, 20 seconds. Um, so then it says good work and I get all the stars. So then I'm gonna hit done and I'll hit continue and it'll bring me to the next. All this is doing is teaching how to use the interface. And eventually we'll get into seeing how we can start putting shapes together and making them into what we want. So now it says, uh, let's move shapes around the work plane, continue to the next step. So I click next. Left click and drag each of the boxes to one of the hints. So all you're gonna do is left click, drag it over, and try to get it exactly where it is overlining. I, I don't think it matters. It, it needs to be close, but I don't think they need it perfect. But try to get it perfect because having that control is really, really important, especially when you get more advanced. If you really like Tinkercad, there's an awesome program called Blender. And Blender, you can do real 3D animation, beautiful movies, uh, YouTube intros, and all that stuff. Um, I, I'll, I'll try to post a a tutorial on that someday, but there's a really cool one. I'll try to link it in the description, but there's a uh, there's one where you learn how to make a donut and a towel. And that may sound like not a lot of fun, but it's absolutely amazing. And the donut ends up looking real and the towel ends up looking real. This in Tinkercad, you're learning the basics. And then Blender, which is a free program, you can't use it on a Chromebook. It has to be on a Windows. I think maybe a, a Mac would work as well, an Apple computer. Um, but it's free. Absolutely cool. So let's continue with Tinkercad. So now I moved them to their spots. I'll hit next. And I did a great job. So we hit done. See how we're moving along. This is awesome. Then rotate it. So let's rotate shapes. So instead of just rotating my view, they actually want to rotate the shapes to align correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click next. It says select a box by left clicking. And I'll start with this one. This will enable the shape handles. Rotate your view to get the best view of the curved rotation handles. So you'll see this. This is a curved rotation handle. And when I mouse over it, it says which plane it's going to rotate around. So for instance, if I click this one, it's going to rotate that way. And that's not what I want. So I'm going to move that back to zero. By the way, if you ever make a mistake, say I, oops, I let go. I don't want this to happen. You can always press back. I guess it's undo, or you can press control Z and that actually works in most software. So I'm going to hit control Z and fixes it. Now I want to rotate this on another axis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my view. And now all I need to do is click on this axis. And now if I move farther out. I have more control. And now you'll see I can very easily align it. And it's probably at 45 degrees. There we go. So it says use the curved arrows to rotate each shape 45 degrees to match the hint. Awesome. So then, oops, I did not complete that. So that was incorrect. So once again, I'll reset that. I'll make sure you see how I do this. I'm just gonna change my view so I can see it correctly. I'm gonna rotate it to 45 degrees. Okay, then this one, I'm gonna rotate my view again. So I'm watching it correctly. I'm gonna rotate the shape 45 degrees. This one, I'm going to rotate my view again, 
click that. If it's rotating on the wrong axis, just please, please make sure that you change your view. When I say axis, think of math class. You learn about the X and Y axis. So this has an X and Y. It also has a Z axis. So the way that would work, if, if I was looking right here, X is this plane, just like we've always learned. Y is the up and down plane. So I can move shapes, which we'll learn in a minute, up and down on the Y axis which we can definitely do. And then Z is actually that axis that comes towards us or farther away. Um, that one's a little harder to do from this view, but basically it would be like that. So now this shape is closer to us on the Z axis than this one. All right. So then we hit next. I, I did it, so it's correct. And then we hit done. We hit continue. Almost there. We're almost done with these. The next one is size it up. So it's going to show us the size. So it says continue to the next step. Obviously, you can read all those directions. I'm, I'm more than happy. That would be great if you're going to read it. It says select a box by left clicking on the shape. This will enable shape handles. Use the black handles on the bottom edge of each shape to size the shape of, in a single direction. So the white ones, don't do those yet because then you're messing with X and Y. I'm sorry, X and Z. Um, you want to just click on the black one. That's just going to affect the X one on this one, and we're going to drag it out to match. You can actually even click through it just like that. That matches. This one, uh, same thing. We click, and now we can change the Z axis on it. And you can almost see through the shape, so we can do that as well. This one was 40 wide, so I'm guessing this one's going to be 40 as well. Um, obviously, if you wanted to make it match perfectly, you could change your view. And then this one, we're just going to stick with the black uh, dots and we'll change this. We'll change all the dimensions this way. So get it to, oops, get it to 40. If you ever mess up, by the way, you can always just click here and type 40 and then press enter. And this one, I'm going to move that out. And this one out. All right, perfect. And then we hit next. And we're good. Now, if it gives you stars and you didn't do it correctly, this is for your learning. So if the stars are popping up, but you didn't actually do it, you should probably go back and do it correctly, right? I want you to learn this stuff. You should want to learn this stuff. This is for your benefit. I mean, this is like the beginning of video game design, the beginning of uh, making 3D animations and YouTube intros. And this is cool stuff. So I, I hope you actually really pay attention to it. Group it. This next one is really, really important. Uh, this is the one that confuses my students the most, but it's it's not that bad. So what we say here, you could obviously we'll read through, you can read through those. It says select the box on the left by left clicking on the shape. So I'm going to click on the box. Now hold shift on the keyboard. If you ever want to uh, highlight multiple things, holding shift will let you highlight multiple things. So right now I only have that box, but if I hold shift and I click on the orange, now I highlight both of them. Now it does say show a hint. Um, so you can read through those if you need help. With both shapes selected, click the group button on the toolbar. So if we go up here, this is the toolbar. Here's the group. You can press control G as well. Learning those shortcuts saves you a lot of time. And when I group it, watch what happens. It'll take a little bit. And on the Chromebooks, it might take a little bit longer, but you'll see now they are one shape completely together. Before, and I'm going to press Control Z to undo that, before I was able to move these separately, right? But now, once we group it, by the way, you can also click and drag. I'll probably show that. If I group it, now when I go to move, I move the whole thing completely together. So they're grouped together. I can ungroup them if I made that mistake. Okay. All right. Now select the box on the right by left clicking. Now I want you to see the difference between these. See this orange solid. When I click on this one, it's a whole. So these are going to, when we group them, they're going to be very, very different. So let me group that one. Now what they're saying is click this, hold shift, click that. You can also click and drag. Um, and then they want you to group this. This one's cool. So now instead of having that shape still, it actually makes a whole through there. Now, you may be wondering what these numbers are. These are in millimeters. Uh, I'm guessing we'll change that in a little bit. You can always click edit grid and change it. 
when you get to 3D printing, that's the actual size it'll print, which is really cool. All right, so we're good on that. Now we hit done, we hit continue. I'm gonna probably go a little bit faster on this next one. Now it says, I'll continue to the next step. Select all the box shapes. This one's cool. So uh, by holding shift, or you could just click and drag. I think the big reason for not doing that is if you have objects you don't want to uh, highlight. This way you can just click, hold shift, click, click. Now I have all three highlighted. This is, this is nice. It says click the align button on the toolbar. This is the align button. If we click that, you'll see these show up. Okay, hover your mouse over each of the black alignment handles to see a preview. So if I click this, watch what would happen. I'm just going to mouse over. I'm not going to click. It would actually line them up that way. If I clicked this, it would line them up on that. If I click this one, it will line them up. Let me show you that one. It'll line them up vertically. If I click this one, it'll line them up there. So it's a, it's a pretty cool thing. Now you'll see you scroll down. Then it says continue to the next step. Click any of the alignment, clicking any of the alignment handles will move the shapes into the align position. The undo button on the toolbar will let change, will let change back. That's an interesting way. It'll change it back if you make a mistake. Maybe I read that wrong. Try to align the boxes on the work plane aligned to the front box. So I want them all aligned to this front box. So I'm just going to click this. And then just to, I don't, I'm not sure if this is what they want or not. I would like to bring them all down. So now we can see how they align. Very cool. Might give you those stars even if you didn't do it. So if you didn't figure out that align thing, go back and check it out. Click done. And now we're done. So I'm going to make a different video in just a little bit on a couple of the projects. But please make sure that you understand those basic uh, direct the starters that we just went through. If you need to watch this video again, watch it. Otherwise, great job. And uh, I'm here for you if you need help.